at time zero, the highlighted cell here is burning and there's a strong constant wind blowing from the south. So the wind is blowing upwards. There are people living in the areas within cell A and cell B. So people are living here and people are living here. What is the minimum time it would take the fire to reach cells A and B? What is the likelihood of fire spreading to cells A and B within that time? So here are the requirements to reach the highest level four. We need to provide time for fire to get to cell A and B, minimum eight hours for both. Likelihood of the fire getting to cell A within that time is high and the likelihood for the fire to get to cell B within that time is very low. So we need to somehow show this work. We need to provide evidence to justify the solution and communicate the solution in context. So make sure you're showing your work and explaining things clearly. Let's read the solution over here. The fastest the fire could reach both indicated cells is eight hours because we have one, two, three, four jumps either way. One, two, three, four, and each jump is two hours. Reading this from a previous, from previous information. However, the fire is more likely to spread to cell A as it is downwind. So this is justification. And the most probable path is indicated by the grid below. So this is the path here. The fire is not likely to spread to cell B because it is upwind. So this is not really being helped by the wind. As you can see, the fire has to actually go upwind, which is going backwards. Whereas downwind is you're going with the flow. The most probable path is indicated by the grid below. So reading this table here, we understand what's happening. Things that are zero, cells that are zero, cannot catch on fire. However, when we have the number one, for example, here, here, as well as here, here, here. Yes, it can catch on fire if there's no wind, but depending on the wind, if it's downwind, the chance of catching on fire increases. Whereas if it's upwind, the chance of the cell catching on fire decreases. So looking at this information here, why is the probability 1.0 and 0.8 0.8, 1.0. Let's take a look at this path here. The wind is helping this cell to catch on fire. And let's look at cell number two. This is cell two here. And because we have a downwind, it's guaranteed to catch on fire. And once we have a certain path, within eight hours, a very, very quick path, you simply multiply the probabilities to get the actual total probability of cell A catching on fire within that time. Now this one here is a bit more tricky because you have to think to for this cell to catch on fire backwards, it's against the wind. So looking at this number one here, it's not just 0.5. There's not a 50% chance of catching on fire. It's gonna be 20% because it's upwind, very, very rare. Okay, so there are four numbers here representing the four probabilities. One, two, three, four. So for the solution two, they have five numbers here. This is probably a typo. So what they're thinking here is the numbers are 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, which is the same as solution one, a different solution over here. Now, the idea of the cell having a probability of one or two so we're going to be focusing on either this one or this one or this one here is they're thinking that everything is upwind. Upwind means fighting. So when we're going backwards, we're definitely fighting here, which is 0.2. And the path here is one, two, one. In this case, it's going to be one, which is 0.2. And then whenever you see the number two, we have a a point three, which is also considered upwind. That's where they're getting the numbers from. 
Now, it seems like the numeracy assessment, they're quite open in as long as you show your work to justify yourself to get a four out of four. But if you think about it, if you're going with the flow, certainly there's going to be a benefit, especially if you're going directly with the flow of the wind. Now, if you're going diagonally backwards or backwards, we're definitely going to be affected by the wind. However, you could also argue that if you're going directly perpendicular to the wind, there's actually no benefit sideways. So for example, if you're going completely sideways across with the wind, will that actually affect you speeding up or slowing down? I want to just draw a little quick picture here just for fun. So imagine this is a, a river and the current is going very quickly. If you start here and you swim across in a certain period of time, if the wind or the water current is very, very quick going to the right, will it actually affect your time to go across the river? And so as you're swimming across this fast, if the water is pushing you sideways, it's going to definitely push you sideways. However, the actual time to swim across is going to be the same. So if you show your work going from the fire to this diagonal backward cell, certainly the, the work here on the solution does make sense. Point two. However, you can argue that cells catching on fire sideways are not affected by the wind. So as long as you show your work, you may be able to multiply by probabilities not affected by the wind going sideways here. So this exemplar, even though it's quite simplistic in uh, the approach of the answer, which is just only one possible path, the truth is that there are six possible ways the fire could reach the cell within eight hours. So imagine the cell here is trying to reach B. It could go this way, and it results in a certain probability. It could even do this. It could do this. It could do this. It could even go up this way or go this way. So there's so many different ways that this could actually happen. So perhaps a student can go beyond four theoretically just because they're actually thinking of all the possibilities. So this question is quite rich. So although this question can be quite complicated, let's look at, a, again, another example of a four out of four. So the student wrote the solution here. For the people living in cell A, they have a minimum of eight hours before the fire arrives based on this path. Here's a nice picture. And this is only one singular path. It's not so sophisticated. The odds of it reaching A in eight hours, 64% based on this calculations. So they're multiplying all the probabilities. And should the fire not arrive in eight hours, it will have an 80% chance every two hours to arrive based on this path and this calculation. So they're also considering for the other possible cell B catching on fire here. The most direct path will arrive in a minimum of eight hours as well. However, the chance is only 0.24% based off the calculation, this. So this answer is quite simplistic, but nonetheless, the student was awarded a four out of four.